Hello, hello class. Um, we're going to start the next lecture on looking at endocrine system and the mechanisms of endocrine signaling. So what you want to look at when you're looking at the endocrine system is what is it, right? The endocrine gland or endocrine cells are cells that will release hormones into the blood. Endo means within, so it's releasing within the body, allowing it to do its work. There are many, many uh, endocrine glands and endocrine tissues in the body. Here we're looking at major organs and glands that make up the major glands of the organ um, endocrine system. So you should learn the anatomy of this. There's um, a blank one for practice quiz and a practice quiz so you can practice a number of times until you really can't identify those. As we go through the units in the next few units you'll learn almost all these glands. So um, you want to make sure you jot down what they do, what hormones are produced. And as we go through each unit, we will be learning more about the endocrine system. So each unit will have its own sets of hormones and, and tissues and glands. But let's look at what makes up an endocrine system. So remember I said in the endocrine system, there is a gland that secretes hormone into the blood. So here's the blood. But there is a few steps. So I kind of broke it down to five steps and I color coded it. And I also like to um, be able to draw these in my journal on my own. So then I have a, almost a stick figure drawing of the endocrine system. So let's take a look at the steps first. Like I said, there's five steps. So first thing is there has to be a stimulus, something that turns on the gland. So the stimulus comes in and turns on the gland. In terms of homeostasis, a lot of times this gland is turned on by something that puts the body out of homeostasis. But it doesn't always have to be homeostasis. So the stimulus comes into the gland, okay? And then the gland gets stimulated, turned on. So when it gets turned on, then the gland will release the hormones here is represented by a purple dot. So the gland in black here, it's going to release hormone into the blood in red. Step three. The hormone will circulate through all the bloodstream or over the whole body. That's why when you take a blood sample for a patient, you can take it from the left arm or the right arm, anywhere, and the hormone will be detected. As the hormone moves through the um, body, it's gonna be looking for binding sites. And the binding sites are the target cells on, on the um, target tissue or target cell. So in this case, you're looking for target cells that have the correct molecular binding site. So here is represented with a circle. Here, this one has a triangle, um, so it's not gonna bind that circular hormone. Remember, these are molecular uh, shapes, not just circles and triangles, but here we're just showing a representation. So this is not the right receptor for this hormone, yet this one is. So at step four, the hormone will bind to the receptor on the target cell. So that becomes the target cell. And the target cell then will produce responses. This could be a wide range of activity. Uh, it can restore the homeostasis of the body, uh, you can make new things, but it could be a number of things, and each pathway will learn the different responses. So once that response is produced, then it's going to feed back to the endocrine gland and shut the whole system up. So this is the general mechanism of endocrine signaling. I do have a brainstorm activity, and they're, they're also in the practice quiz. I want you to think of what can go wrong at each of the steps. Make a list. What can go wrong with the endocrine gland? Maybe it doesn't make hormone. What can go wrong with the target cell? Think about the receptor, think about the response, think about the cells itself. And then what can go wrong with the hormone? Because as you brainstorm these things, um, there's a whole slew of pathology that can happen in the endocrine system. Also, I want to talk a note about studying tools. I use a lot of schematic drawings and to master pathways and learn things. You want to be able to recreate something, draw it out, 
put in your journal. So I use a lot also color association so that when I look at this picture right away, I know red hormone, insulin is a hormone. So even if the word is new, you can right away say, oh, that's a hormone. Oh, that's a gland. Oh, that's a target tissue and target response. All in blue target. So as you journal this, try to use color coding and think of it. And I also want you to um, use the words to describe. Don't let, when you draw it, think about what does the words that go with the picture as well. So as you journal it, draw it, write the words, think of a scenario. So now, if in this example, with your brainstorming, go back to your drawing and think, okay, what happened? What can happen to the pancreas? What can happen to the insulin? And what can happen to the response? Okay, there's a whole lot of examples. So next, we're going to talk about the step one. What is the stimulus? So the stimulus is what turns on the endocrine organ. And this falls into three categories, humoral, neural, and hormonal. So the question is looking at step one here. What turns on the endocrine gland? And they fall into three categories. So in here, what you can see is that the power, the color associations that really we're focusing on the green parts, the stimulus in each drawing and comparing and contrasting that. Let's go with the humoral first. Humorous of the body is the fluid of the body, which now we're looking at the blood. So here we're seeing that blood glucose, as example, is elevated. But this could be blood levels of anything we measure, right? It could be oxygen, CO2, pH. The blood glucose is going to be moving around the blood. And when the endocrine gland senses that, the high blood glucose is going to be a stimulus, turns on the green light goal on the endocrine gland to make the hormone. So the definition here will be the gland responds to changes in blood levels. Okay, so this could be blood levels of glucose, like I say, calcium, sodium. Okay, let's give you an example. High levels of blood calcium stimulates the parafollicular cells to make calcitonin. So in this example, I use blood levels of calcium. That's the stimulus. Okay, now let's look at the next one, neural. In this example, neural is going to refer to some kind of neuronal activity. Okay. So here we have the brain communicating through a neuron. Okay, that's the stimulus that turned on the endocrine gland to make a hormone. So the gland is releasing a hormone and stimulated by neurons. So let's go through an example. Upon seeing the fire, the sympathetic ganglion is activated to turn on the adrenal gland to make adrenaline, okay? So in that example, you can see that it was the sympathetic neurons in the ganglion that turned on the gland. The last example is a little bit confusing, but we'll be spending a lot of time on this because it's the major way of regulating um, hormonal secretion. The last one is hormonal. So hormonal is that the hormone is the stimulus right? Hormonal stimulus. So here, for example, the hypothalamus here is box in black, the gland. The gland makes a hormone, one. So it's a hormone, but this hormone is functioning to turn on the plus sign, the anterior pituitary. Okay, so that's what's turning on the anterior pituitary. So in this example, the gland releases hormone because it's stimulated by an upstream hormone, okay? And so let's use an example. The hypothalamus releases TRH to turn on the anterior pituitary to make TSH. So what is TRH? Is it a humoral, neural, or hormonal stimulus, right? So in that case, because it's a hormone, that's acting as a stimulus as a hormone. You wanna compare 
the green part and make examples. There's practice problems in the practice quizzes. So you can have an example to look at different types. We're look, again, looking for keywords, blood levels, elevated or depressed. There's a neuron or is there a hormone that is stimulating a gland? You want to take some time to review these notes and practice. So we just went through four slides, right? So these questions will be then asking you to think about these four slides. Sometimes you might be like, well, I don't really know what that is. What well, doesn't matter? Read it carefully and think about how they fit into this picture of the mechanism of endocrine signaling. And then can you come up with those answers? And also when you do these questions, really think about, okay, what is it? Can I draw some picture? Can I draw a picture to represent this? Um, and then when you go through each answer, think about why is it the answer and why is it incorrect? That allows you to really think about um, what is the importance of understanding the concept. You can also look at this and say, well, which slide is, which slide is this, this question asking me? And do I understand that slide? So keep practicing and then do the practice quiz. If you don't understand something, say, okay, I really don't understand the concept of slide six and seven and review that more. Okay, as we, you wanna build good skills. So as you go on, these skills will help you learn more difficult concepts. If you have any questions, post in the discussion board, send me an email, or come to my virtual office hour. Good luck.